if a fracking operation was to mess this up, it could never be replaced. And there's very few places in this area that you can find that has the different types of uh, trees and wildlife that we have here. Notice these lines of evergreens. I planted over 12,000. I went around 20 acres and planted over 20,000 white pine, loblolly pine, and uh, cedar, red cedar, white cedar, to give me a border, a privacy screen around my property. I figured in later years that the land around me would get cut out and uh, developed, and pretty much that's what's happening. We are very responsible with the, with the environment. That we are very, very careful to restore uh, any damage that's done through truck traffic or through uh, surface improvements that we make on these properties. That we restore them back to their original state. We uh, we clean as we go with the industry. That's what we require of of the American Petroleum Institute, the American Natural Gas Association, and all their affiliate members when they come here. Um, we put very, very stringent standards in place. Uh, through the state rulemaking framework. I chair the State Mining and Energy Commission and, and we, are, uh, we are very conscious about, about protecting the environment. We live in this state, we live in this county, uh, some of us, and we want to make sure that our water and our air are kept clean. Uh, we don't have any reason, uh, financial or otherwise, to want to pollute our air and our water. And, and, and citizens should be reassured by that, that I'm a locally elected official. My, my name, my reputation, and my um, and my uh, longevity in this county depend on us doing it well and doing it responsibly. Well, we typically like to refer to the, uh, to the more scientific name of hydraulic fracturing. Uh, there are, there are um, media and other types that refer to the, the um, short title as fracking but we prefer the, uh, the longer title of hydraulic fracturing to, to specify that phase of the oil and gas operation that specifically refers to stimulation of a well, which generates gas and oil deposits for, um, that can be taken to market. Hydraulic fracturing is, is one uh, very small part of a very much larger operation that is involved in bringing oil and gas out of the ground as well as other, other um, um, hydrocarbon uh, elements so that they can be uh, used in, in um, industrial activity and, and for fuels uh, of all sorts. We have, uh, we have a more appropriate term that we like to refer, refer to as uh, horizontal drilling, and that is actually the, the full process of, of, of creating the well, the vertical well, turning it horizontal, stimulating the well, and removing the hydrocarbons from the well. So that's re typically referred to as horizontal drilling. Mr. Harris. How are we doing today, buddy? Doing pretty good. good. Appreciate you having me. Oh man, anytime, anytime. So, what can you what can you tell us about fracking? What's uh what is the what is fracking? What is that? Well, fracking is a slang term used um, for hydraulic fracturing, which is a method of extracting gas from shale formations that was laid down millions of years ago. We have a, a strip of shale here in North Carolina that runs. Uh, from the mountains down through the middle of the state and North Carolina uh, here in Lee County uh, Lee County Chatham County Moore County is what is known as the sweet spot we seem to be the area that they suspect that they can find the most uh, gas now you say suspect so they don't fully know that it's just a well you never know until you drill My uh, grandfather got this property from his father, uh, John Spivey. John ran a country store over here on the Plank Road. This property is located about halfway between South Plank Road and Blackstone Road. And this is Little Pocket Creek that runs through the bottom down here. So uh, how much uh, fracking will be going on around here if, if all the laws and stuff go through? Well, that depends on how many people lease their property
for fracking. It's um, in a given area. What you're trying to do is uh, with this fracking uh, Senate Bill 820, if 60 percent, and this is a, the percentages and the acreages on this is uh, kind of up in the air right now. They're looking at a, a drilling unit or a drilling area as being one square mile. That's 640 acres. If the gas company can lease 384 acres out of the 640, that's 384 acres is 60 percent. Then they would be able, against the landowner's uh, wishes, to simply take over the other 256 or whatever for the uh, without uh, any permission at all. It's called compulsory pooling. Uh, if your neighbors around you lease, and then you don't wish to, when a certain amount of when, once they get a certain amount of the acreage, then they can come in and frack you whether you want to be fracked or not. So that there's, they're definitely saying that there's shell uh, formations under this land though? Yes, uh, the maps, um, the map that I gave you has a light color of an area that's sh that shaded in along with the uh, showing the lands that have been leased and the lands that are separate estates. And a strip of shale, uh, we, my property here would be at the uh, south eastern edge of the, uh, what they consider their play or where the uh, shale is, uh, li you know, lies in the area. And anybody can go find this map. Where is it at? It's at the, uh, you can get it at the uh, Lee County uh, Map Office, GIS. Uh, Don Kosovic, uh, the gentleman that uh, does this uh, stuff, has done a wonderful job. In fact, a lot of the other counties are coming to him for information, but he has different overlay maps that shows the areas that have been leased. It shows the areas which are separate or servered estates. This is where people have purchased land and many of them without realizing it did not realize that they were only purchasing the land. They didn't get the mineral rights to go with it. And when you have a uh, servant of state, the state legislature is saying that the people that own the mineral rights have the right to go after those minerals. And that includes the right to come onto the surface that you have purchased and do as they darn well please uh, in order to get to those minerals. Compulsory pooling is, is, is on the books today. It's part of the statutes of the state of North Carolina and it's there to protect landowner rights. And we intend to continue using compulsory pooling to protect landowner rights. Um, whether they want to drill or they don't want to drill, we want to make sure that, that, that everyone's rights are observed or respected. Uh, we have ways, methods by which the uh, drilling units can be, can be allocated so that we can carve the drilling unit around, um, around a, a, someone that wants to opt out of the drilling. We also have methods by which uh, we can have pew clauses written into the contract so that, that, so that someone may want certain minerals removed but not others. Uh, so there, there are some things we can do strategically and surgically around the, the county that will allow landowner rights to be observed. Uh, there are some rare occasions around the country and potentially in Lee County where someone may choose uh, because of political or other, other reasons to want to stop the industry from developing that may try certain techniques that would, that would, that would stop other landowners from being able to, to benefit from the, the oil and gas resources they have under their land. In those cases, we may have to uh, invoke compulsory pooling to allow certain individuals to, to gather uh, uh, profit from their resources while others are trying to keep them from doing that. We hope not to have to go to that, but, uh, but that is, that is, a, that is a, a potential occurrence in North Carolina. We hope that we won't have to go through that. 
I've always enjoyed getting out, walking around in the woods, or being in the woods. I grew up on the Plank Road, and uh, my mother's aunt owned about a thousand acres that joined us. And I lived in those woods. Come home from school, toss them books, and hit the woods. You, you can't argue or, or convince someone when emotion is a part of the conversation because the emotion tends to, to obscure the facts or the logic and, and the question about whether to drill and when to drill and, and you know, how deep to drill, those questions are, are, are best based on scientific fact, and not opinions and emotion. Um, I know it's an emotional concern to anti-drilling activists that they feel like their rights are being lost or their voice isn't being heard and it becomes an emotional discussion as opposed to a logical discussion. I try to, we try to get past that. Uh, so that's the first, first challenge is to make it a, a logical, practical argument and, and use scientific evidence and, and, and experience from around the country uh, to make the argument. You can, there's a lot of information out there, pro and con. The thing is, do you want to take a chance on moving this in next door to you? Me? Do you want to take a chance on having your well water uh, possibly uh, poisoned with pollutants that's going to make you and your family sick, or your well water become unusable? Now the companies, the way this Senate Bill 820 is written, if a cont if contamination of water, an aquifer that your well is on, is proven to be associated with a fracking operation, the driller is required to replace your water supply for 10 years. They say this also provides if your well becomes contaminated within 5,000 feet of a drilling operation, that the contamination would be, to con would be considered as coming from that well. But if you're 5,100 feet or 5,200 feet, you're out of luck. then you're out of luck. However, horizontal, horizontal fracking can extend for several miles.